we encounter a very familiar parable today, of course, the parable of the mustard seed. And it's familiar with us because it's in all the synoptic gospels, so it's in Matthew and Luke as well. Plus, it's one that's just really beautiful, right? The parable of, of the mustard seed, that it starts small, and then it grows into one of the largest shrubs, one of the largest bushes, we could say. So you know what the point of the parable is, right? That something that starts small, usually maybe our faith, can grow into something very, very big. But it's important to realize that this parable is in reference to the kingdom of God. And right away, when Jesus mentions mustard seed, uh, the Israelites, the people listening to him, would have thought, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't right. Because the kingdom of God should be compared to any plant, of any seed, should be, should be compared to a cedar tree. We hear about this in our, in our first reading. And remember, whenever you want to know what the gospel is really about, if you can't quite figure it out, always go back to the first reading. The church in its infinite wisdom lines up in ordinary time the first reading to kind of give you a key to the gospel. So let's go back to the first reading. It's from the prophet Ezekiel. And what does it say? Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain, on the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. Now we know what it's referring to there, right? That this is now the, the temple in a certain sense. And this, this new kingdom of, of God, the, the kingdom of the, of the Jewish people, of, of the Israelites. And it's from this, this cedar. And cedar, by the way, throughout scriptures, looks like what? It's always referring to, a, to an empire, we could say. And why is that? Well, the cedar tree itself, we know is what? We know that it's, we know it's strong, uh, we, we know that, you know, if you go, even now, if you go to the lumber yard, you ask for cedar or pine, who you know which one's be more expensive, by the way. Cedar is, because it holds up better. So it's strong, it's, it's tall, it's, it's a symbol of, of wealth as well. And more importantly, and throughout the whole Old Testament, the cedar is a symbol for an empire. The empire of Egypt, the empire of Lebanon, the empire of the Israelites. And so here is Jesus using a parable explaining what is the kingdom of God going to be like. And this would once again this throw the people off. We've, we've become familiar with it. But this is not how we view necessarily the kingdom of God. To a mustard seed? A mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. And we know that if I had mustard seeds in my hand right now, there'd be thousands of them in there. They're very, very small. But you're saying, yeah, Father, they're small, but they grow and they become great. They're huge. Somewhat. Somewhat. Because what does it say in the, in, the, in the gospel? But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants. Huh. That doesn't quite seem as big as a cedar tree, does it? So maybe that's a misinterpretation. Let's use a different interpretation. It grows up and becomes the biggest of the shrubs. Does that help you at all? Let's use a different one. It grows up and becomes biggest of the bushes. It grows up and becomes biggest of the weeds. This would be the interpretation. You see, it's not like a cedar tree. A cedar tree is 120 feet tall. The biggest mustard bush out there or shrub, 10 feet tall. On average, it's six feet, by the way. And this is what Jesus is saying the kingdom of God shall be compared with. And so he uses a new image. And why is this? Because he wants us to help us see that when we look for the kingdom of God, we can't look with worldly eyes. We can't think that the kingdom of God is going to be a political movement. We can't think that the kingdom of God is all of a sudden, this whole world, we're all going to be perfect. So often we fall into this, right? 
And when this happens, what do we start to lose? We start to lose trust. We start to lose faith in God. But he is saying, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God starts as a small mustard seed. And it springs up and it grows. And it has plenty of shade for all the birds of the sky. But it's going to look different than worldly principalities. And we know this to be true. How did the church start, by the way? It started small. Who did Jesus choose? Once again, this always should blow our mind. He doesn't choose the Pharisees. He doesn't choose the scribes. He chooses fishermen. He chooses a zealot. He chooses a tax collector. What? These are his 12 apostles? These are his followers? And even one of those apostles, we know what? Betrays him? The kingdom of God, this new covenant that he wants to establish with us, starts so small in the image of a mustard seed. And yet it springs forth. And where does it spring forth, by the way? We know that that seed is Jesus is on the cross and that blood comes out of his side, blood and water. This month of June, as we're celebrating the sacred heart of, of Jesus, that it goes onto that, that dirt at Calvary. And all of a sudden, this new kingdom springs forth. But not a kingdom the world may even acknowledge, but rather a kingdom we know is eternally. And this new church as well. Once again, so often we can give in to uh, anxiety. We can give in to, to worry. What's happening with the church? God has a plan. Let's not look at it in human eyes, but rather look at it through the eyes of God, knowing that the seed has been planted and that is one that has endured for over 2,000 years. Praise God. And that we may take refuge in this shrub. We may take refuge in this, this bush. We should take refuge in this church. A church that the Lord has established small in the beginning. And now covering not just Israel, but now the universal church, the Catholic church, all throughout the world. How beautiful this is, not to lose trust, but instead to place our trust in a kingdom that is eternal.